Hey there, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly for Beeducation.com. And I'm Mel McKay with Beeducation.com. We just shot this great class over on Facebook Live, our Beeducation Live show, but we've edited it and archived it here for you to watch. If you hear us answering customer questions or talking to, quest talking to customers, you can just ignore that. That was just stuff that was in the moment when we shot the class, but there's still so much great content here. Yeah, but if you have questions while you're watching this archive, go ahead and leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching through our site, just toss us an email at classes at beachcation.com. And we'll get back to you with an answer. Yeah, let's get into the video. Good morning, everybody. It's Lisa Niven Kelly here for beachcation.com. And I'm all by myself. As you can see, Mel has abandoned me. She's gone to float down the Ruffin, Ruff, Ruffin, the Russian River with Claudia. That's just not fair, but I hope they're having a great time. So I'm in control here. That's why I keep looking down at my computer. But today, what we're going to be doing is texturing the edge of metal blanks. And what this does is add not only a really cool look, but it also softens the edges if you have a blank with kind of sharp edges. That's why I really like it. But sometimes my edges are perfectly soft and I do this to the edge because I like the way it looks. So today what we're gonna do is, let me show you this. I'll show you this guy here. Can you see this cool texture on the outside? It's kind of bright there. The outside of the rim there. So that's done with the chasing hammer. You can use either side actually, and I'm gonna show you both. This is a chasing hammer. It's got one side with a big face, one little peened end. This is the high-end frets chasing hammer, which is my preference. I really love this. It's weighted really nice, has a very comfortable handle, but both of these will for sure work. We've sold these for 20 years. These are new to us in the last five or 10 maybe. So what you wanna look for in a chasing hammer is a nice flat face. You don't want it too, too flat where the edge might catch on your blank and leave a line, or you don't want it um, too con, I always get them confused, convex is in or out? Out. Out, you do want it a little bit convex. <laughs> I don't know what I get it confused with. What's the, concave, yeah, I got it, okay. Um, so if it's too convex and really rounded, then your striking area is only one spot. So you wanna look for one that's a little bit convex, but not like a huge mound and definitely not totally flat. You can see that on this guy. At least I hope you can see that. All right. So these blanks that I'm working with are aluminum. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and they are 18 gauge. So this technique works really well on just about all gauges, but this erasing technique, the, the little trick that I'm gonna show you only works on the thick ones. So before I texture the outside, I'm gonna show you the little tip of the week, which is, let's say that you have a blank like this where you messed up. Do you see the upside down Y? I see the upside down Y, okay? I may or may not have messed this up on purpose just for you guys, I will never tell. So if you have a really soft metal like aluminum, sorry for the airplane coming by, and it's thick, like 18 gauge, you can kind of come through and texture the whole thing and it'll take out those letters and then you can stamp them back in. But again, this won't work on a hard, like a 24 gauge nickel, it's just, you're not gonna get the same effect, but because this is so thick. So I'm gonna come in with the peened end and you have to texture all over the blank to get the look. So you can see I'm our, it's already kind of, let's get that focus going. It's already sort of taking off the letters. You can see they're disappearing on the top. And of course you have to do it all over, like I said, otherwise it would look weird to just have like a textured part in the middle. I haven't really concentrated on the middle because I want to show you this. But you can see here the IZZY is sort of disappearing and I'm really going to go for it in the middle. 
if this worries you holding it with your hand, you can hold it with like the eraser of a pencil, hold it down, or you can tape it down. The only problem with tape is you have to keep adjusting it because you're moving all over the place. You see that? Is that in focus? Kind of? Yeah. So you can see the whole thing is textured now and you can't see the I Z Z Y anymore. So then I would just put it back on. I might flatten it, but I don't have those tools with me. So I'm going to fake it for you here right now. And to flatten it, I would take a chasing hammer and just hit it on. Well, let's do it with, I would take a plastic hammer. I'll do it with chasing hammer, which isn't a good idea because you might mark that, but okay, now it's flat. Usually you do that with a plastic or a, a weighted plastic mallet so that it doesn't, you don't pick up the scratches of the bench block on the back of there. So then I would just come through and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it again for you and show you how it looks. Again, this isn't like ideal, but it's just if you have a mistake and you don't want to throw it out, try this and see if you can get that to disappear. You can see I didn't get the black in the bottom of my eye. That sounds uncomfortable, get the black in my eye. And this, I'd clean a little bit more, but this is, see? So it kind of works, and then you don't have to throw it away. Now, of course, I would have spent a little more time on that little Y up there and around the edges so the whole thing looks uniform. But that's your tip of the week. Just wanted to throw that out there while we're using the chasing hammer. Uh, other things you can do for it. So for today's, excuse me, for today's project though, you can see this guy, I've already textured a little bit on the edge. So sometimes with stamps, you know, they get, um, they're not cast, they're punched through metal. So sometimes there's a little bit of a sharp edge on the back. And if that's a concern to you, um, sometimes it's sharper than other times, you can file it down, you can you know, try steel wool, but you can also take the chasing hammer, I like to use the ball pain, and just texture on the outside. So what I'm doing is hitting, I'll try to zoom in a little bit more, I'm hitting really, really lightly. And I'm coming at an angle like this because what I don't want to do, and I do it often, is accidentally hit in the middle of the blank. I just want to keep it on the end. You'll hear my, my hammer hitting the bench block a little bit, but this is a really, really light tap. So my, bench, my hammer hitting my bench block is not going to injure either my hammer or my bench block. If I was doing it really hard, yes, it would. But a really tight, light tap. So it just gives this little cool look, and because it's kind of hammered with the texture, it reflects light a little bit different on the edge. So you can see I'm kind of, well, you can't see from the camera because it looks like I'm just up and down, but I'm a little bit at an angle. Of course, this is extreme. If I come straight on, I'm afraid I'm not going to get it in the right spot, but just a little bit of an angle. Again, because of the camera angle, it looks like I'm straight on, but believe me, I'm not. So let's look at this one. Does this have the plastic on it? No. So you can also do it with the other side of the hammer. I'm just going between hammers so you can see that they both work. And because, again, this is slightly convex, the striking area is just right in the middle, I'm going to just hit right on the edge. My hammer's a little bit tilted, so it doesn't end up hitting the middle. And yes, you are hearing it hit the bench block, but it's so light that everybody's fine. Trust me. So what this side does is give, let's see if we can get that to focus. It gives a little bit less like of the dented or like a peened look and more just like flat facets. I'll do a little bit with this side so hopefully you can see the difference. And how deep you go towards the middle is up to you and how hard you hit it is up to you. You see the difference between the two? A little more texture here and a little more of just flat facets there. So you're asking, 
recording with my. So you're asking like if they want a textured look on the whole blank mm -hmm. with the letter in it. For sure, you're exactly right, Laura. Laura's always right, everybody just call her, she'll let you know. But exactly, so you can see that if you stamped first and then textured, you'd be kind of erasing your letters. So texture first, if that's a look you're going for, then add the letters, and that's totally fine. It looks really pretty, you saw it there, but you can also use it um, as sort of an erasing technique if you have a boo-boo, a boo-boo. How about using textured hammers by Gabby? Yes. You can use textured hammers and you can, I like to use actually a riveting hammer because it's got the flat end and it adds little lines. But again, be careful to keep it just on the edge. And sometimes with textured hammers, you have to hit really hard to get the effect. So you want to be really careful that you're not hitting really hard and slightly hitting your bench block, block like we talked about because you'll, you can mar up your bench block if you're hitting very hard. But just play with it. I mean, these aluminum blanks or copper blanks are pretty inexpensive. Just, you know, play with the different textures on the outside. Maybe keep them and label them like I did this one with this hammer, this one with this hammer. So you have a reference next time you go and want to do it again. Pretty good idea. Uh, Julie asks, what are you using as a base under the bench block? Oh, Julie, this is the new purple. <laughs> oh, Julie, let me grab it for you. This is new. It is a purple sandbag. We're out of them right now, but they're coming. And we also make it in a five and five and a half inch by five and a half inch for the smaller blocks. But this has been a big hit. We just launched them and sold out right away. And in fact, in our Facebook group, which by the way, if you're not in there, do a search for beeducation.com community, metal stamping and beyond. And we have a Facebook group where there is a lot of learning, a lot of generosity, and a lot of great stuff. If you're, new, if you're a beginner, it's a perfect spot for you. Someone, I know I'm getting off topic, but someone yesterday posted something. They're like, ah, oh, it's my first post. I'm really nervous. And they posted a stamped piece and got like 50 comments on, this is great, good for you. You know, you could do this a little different. She was looking for feedback. And it was just so cool of her to be vulnerable and put it out there and then get all this support and feedback. So that's what's happening in that group. Just go and click join and then you have to answer three questions and then we let you in. But anyway, in that group, this has got a couple nicknames. I think they, <laughs> shoot, I'm not going to remember it. One gal's calling it like the, the purple bag of perfection or something. And then someone else is calling it your highness because it's purple. But um, everyone that's received in the mail, great feedback. And what this pad does, um, and we have another beige one in the shop that we've had forever, but it's a little full. And so if, if you're using a four inch by four inch bench block, it kind of tilts. But what this guy does, it lets it sit in there like you saw, nice and nice and snugly. But it's got sand underneath it, so it still gives the resistance that you need to stamp. So I wouldn't want like something really rubbery, or I'm looking over here at velvet pads. You don't want that under your bench block because it's gonna make it bounce. This gives resistance. So if you've watched any of our beginning classes, we always say nothing under your bench block. Work on a stable table with the exception of a sandbag or a bag filled with steel shot. I've seen those too, which are really, really hard. will give the resistance. But what this dude does also is helps with sound. So I don't find I get a better impression if I stamp on this, but I really use it for sound. Um, it takes like, a few decimals off of that horrible sound that sounds like a gunshot that's like ah and it just makes it softer so your neighbors neighbors will appre appreciate it your ears will appreciate it what else susan asks when would you use a dapper to dome the flank so you're talking about like um a dapping set they come in wood or they come in metal the wooden ones are not too deep so it gives just a little bit of a um of a shape to it that's kind of neat or the other ones are way deeper that's also gives it a neat shape or they're used for different things making beads things like that so i assume maybe you're asking if you textured and you stamped and all that when would you dap it and you would dap, dap it last if you're using a metal dapper you have to be careful that you're not hitting it so hard that the inside of the metal dap is is then like softening out all the work you just did but you can imagine if you dapped it first then you would have to stamp on a domed thing which is is really hard pretty much impossible <laughs> so uh clarify if if that's not exactly what you were asking susan right all right mel will be back next week and we will see you guys then thanks <laughs>